now. Okay, okay, so let's go back to the beginning and... Wait, hold on, Draymond. Yeah. If you want me to focus on Sidewinder, you can focus on Hoop. Uh, what I want you to focus on then is I really want you to focus on Sidewinder's base then. I'll focus on who you sort of ignore most of him. Focus on looking for when was that Nexus cancelled? When did the drop come in and take out his Robo Bay? Little things like that, okay? Yeah, I'll do that. Cool. Okay, gonna do play in three, two, one, play. Welcome everybody to StarCraft 2 tournament. Wow, I totally messed up that opening. How about you <laughs> take it away? Hey, this is Dylan. I'm co-casting with Draymond right now for the semifinals. We have the Great Proto Sidewinder with the Purple Terran uh, Hoog right now. And actually, this is our third or fourth recasting of this video because first times we messed up the audio and then we kept missing when the Nexus was cancelled. So hopefully we'll get it right this time. You and know, they would not have known how many times we messed this up if you didn't tell them. They would think, <laughs> like, this is, you know, our second time at worst. Come on, man. Come on, back me up on this. I am backing you up. No, you aren't. I just, it's too late now, though. Well, I just gotta let them know that this is the reason why I, our recasting is gonna be kind of pre-planned because we know the outcome so well. Yeah, right. We still miss everything every time. <laughs> well, uh. hopefully we can focus on that expansion. So right now we have the early scout by Sidewinder and pretty standard openings. Uh, the harvesters are even right now. And Sidewinder's going for the standard Protoss opening so far. That has that piling up, getting some more workers. Yep. Yeah. I'm just sitting here on Sidewinder's first person cam, just sort of looking at what he's doing. Uh, as we can see, finally catching that scout and realizing, oh, I need to turn around and go back and look at the base. Uh, one thing that I really like to do is uh, usually your scout will get to their base. At about, like, if you scout the correct base first, usually your scout will get there for Protoss at about the same time you want to throw down your gateway. And it's hard to do two things at once, so what I'll do a lot is I'll stay on my main base, I'll be watching the minimap, and if my scout goes to a base that's theirs, I'll use the minimap to select that scout, that's why you want to hotkey your scouts, and I'll just have them move around the base a little bit with my mouse clicking on the minimap, and that way I can stay at my base, focus on throwing down this gateway. Once the gateway's down, uh, and then I build a worker, quickly look at my scout, set up a better rally path, and then quickly go back, do my assimilator, and then you can focus on your scout for a little bit longer. So that's just a little bit of a tip. Then we have the Cybernetics Core going up, and who I mean, Sidewinder has his gas going, and who seems to be a... who has his gas going as well, and right now Sidewinder... Sidewinder no, who gets a pie blocked almost. Sidewinder just got his pile on up. Yeah, who forgetting to build that barracks. second barracks or that second supply depot on time. A little bit of a mistake there. Also, getting his orbital command a little late as well. And he's going for a quick two racks opening though. A tech lab going down on the first one, nothing going down on the second one, so he can pop out his first marine. We have the second gateway popping up on Sidewinder's base, and we have the pylon in the back with the vents. Yep. Always good idea, always use your buildings to scout the map. The only thing you do want to remember is super, super early in the game, they cannot get flying like dropships out here. It's pretty hard for them to do. So you don't want to be aggressive with throwing down too many pylons just to cover your whole base. You can definitely, you know, as you go, just cover your whole base. Uh, Hoog, Hoog here going for the three third racks. He's doing a three racks build. As I've said many times, I really, really am not a big fan of three racks in PVT right now. I find that the two racks fast expand is pretty much the best build to do against Protoss right now because Protoss will completely obliterate uh, Bio, which would be Marines and Marauders, any time that they can survive long enough in the game, and usually three racks cannot kill them early in the game. So it's much better to do a two racks fast expand, beat them at the economy game, have just enough units to win any sort of early aggression they do against you. Right. And the Nexus is going up right now at 534. He has it queued. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I was going to say it's not going up yet, but you said he had it queued. And yeah, definitely we've seen that uh, Sidewinder looks like he's going to be doing a fast, a relatively fast expand. And definitely, I'm a big fan of macro. You will notice that uh, as long as you're doing proper scouting, you can always do a very, very fast expand. 
and put you really, really far ahead by having your economy better than your opponent. You just have to be careful to spout, scout and make sure that they uh, you know, won't kill you because you're definitely making yourself weaker when you expand extremely fast as you'll have less units out. Right. Nexus is halfway done, hasn't been cancelled yet, and it's at the 636 mark. Yeah, we can see a factory coming down for Hoogan. Oh, the cancel oh, comes canceled. down. Six, 644, the Nexus was cancelled, so he did cancel that for some reason. Yeah, I'm not sure why he chose to cancel that. Uh, part of the reason could just be that he does not have enough resources and he has supply blocked himself. I think the main reason why he chose to cancel that was he was just like, oh, I can't build anything right now, I have no money. Uh, but at the same time, really, I'm not a big fan of cancelling that. As I was saying before, it really, 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 really helps to get that fast economy. And yeah, it would have given him a, real, a really big advantage over Hoog as Hoog is falling behind in the workers. Yeah, he did not see three racks. He saw two racks. So it's potential. it might be possible that he was just afraid of an early attack based on his scouting. He really shouldn't have been, though, because as long as you can keep that third up, and usually you will keep that third up, you, sorry, that expansion up, you'll be light years ahead of your right. opponent for putting down that expansion sooner as you'll be able to produce pr workers twice as fast as your opponent and you'll soon have a lot more. Right, and we have the bunker going up and Hoog is getting ready to try to contain Yeah, him. I like this play, Hoog going for a contain on the Protoss player, uh, not going to overcommit anything while he gets up this expansion. That's basically what he's doing. He's He's buying enough time for his expansion to get up and for his economy to get much better than his opponents. But of course, supply block himself yet again. This is very disastrous as we see his supply is rapidly falling behind the Protoss player due to supply blocking himself one too many times. Yeah, I think supply blocking is definitely Hoon's biggest downfall this match and his previous matches as well. We do see a double forwards coming down for Sidewinder. Very popular strategy versus Terran is to do double chrono boosted upgrades on your workers. Uh, this was popularized by a few pro players. I don't know the 100% full details so I won't tell you guys too much right now but as we can see going to engage that bunker that SCV should be repairing it which would do a lot uh, but choosing not to, choosing instead to micro completely against those stalkers and there we go bunker goes down he's done a lot of damage he's allowed his command sense to go down sooner and wisely he's retreating now and just going to play it safe and defend back home. I would like to see though a bunker or two coming down in front of his base as it's very very important to make sure you're... And we have the next, we have Sidewinder's Nexus coming back up. Yeah of course he is finally expanding now that he's got a decent sized army and has pushed the Terran player away and as we see he's coming back in with a very large army. If we look at the army tab we can see very close uh, with Protoss player being slightly ahead in army so and we have his first immortal coming out yeah. right now. So it can be very, very dangerous. Uh, he has to be very, very careful. Uh, our player Hoog does, as he does not have a, any bunkers down here to defend. And even though Hoog will probably won't matter with the air, he, uh, Sidewinder has a lot better anti-air right now. Oh, Sidewinder though, having very, very bad micro though, though his Guardian Shields not covering all of the Stalkers. Those Force Fields were slightly good, but not good enough. A lot of overlap there and he will lose this battle and lose a lot more, but Stim has been used so excessively for Hoog that his units are just about dead, and if he doesn't get a medevac out on the field soon, these units will die in any future engagement without doing much damage. And a really good tip for Terran is to master the, the use of the Stim pack because it does have a decent duration, so clicking it ahead of time just loses your efficiency with it. Yeah, you really want to be careful how you use your Stim as a Terran player, especially when you don't have medevacs to heal that, because if you use Stim too much, your army will be extremely weak by having no health and but at the same time stim increases your damage by 50 percent making your army just that much stronger and for marines if you get combat shield that's basically a free stim pack yeah. right there as far as health yeah definitely a lot of players uh, get combat shield quite late and we see, finally see two bunkers coming down i'm glad to see he's finally doing a bit of defense but you know it's a bit late we've got f six bear now out for our Terran player, so that's a ton of barracks, not bringing his two siege tanks back here to help defend. So, but... This, bu this bio ball could definitely do one who, if uh, 
So what you said to go yeah, well, the thing is, we're seeing the Templar archives coming out, so we're going to probably be seeing Templars coming down, and we're seeing, of course, still those double upgrades being made, and we're seeing a lot of Zealots coming out. And Charge has already been researched, so these will be Charge lots. And with the recent patch, uh, what was it, about a month ago, Blizzard uh, improved the yeah. Charge ability. They've now made it so that Zealots with Charge are guaranteed to hit at least one target every time they charge. So this has made them extremely strong, that much better. They were already pretty good against the Terran army, but it's made them just that much better. And I've heard a lot of pro-level Terran players actually complaining that the charge lots have actually made the matchup that much harder. Right. Well, I think I think the charge ability is a lot better than the speed upgrade that Zealots have in StarCraft 1. It just I didn't play StarCraft 1 enough, then. so I really can't comment on that. Once again, Hoog supply block himself, which will mean that his overall supply will rapidly be falling behind the Protoss player Sidewinder. And Hoog is definitely behind in workers right now. So yeah, he's, he's been behind for a lot of the game. His macro has completely slipped. He's letting too much energy up on these command centers, not using mules. Definitely falling apart as we go into the late game. His early game, mid game is okay, but his late game definitely not as strong. And loading up a medevac here and definitely queuing it in a long direction. He's definitely going to be going for a drop sometime soon. I really don't like though the fact that he's left all of his siege tanks right here on this edge of the cliff all clumped together. Hoog really needs to learn how to better position the siege tanks. Those should be sitting down here and they should be spread out more. And the main reason why you want to spread out your siege tanks is if units such as charge lots get right on top of them, they're really not that effective anymore. Right. Uh, uh, putting the siege tanks behind yeah. these bunkers. We do see Psionic Storm being doing. researched as well as second level upgrades are finally coming out. And it looks like as if, oh no, Sidewinder has not been that great with all of his chrono boost. As only as one Nexus is now at full energy, he really should be chrono boosting out these upgrades at all times, considering how late we are in the game and there's not much else he needs to spend his chrono boost on right now. Right. Oh, there's a pie drop right now. It's oh, yeah, and the Observer Ion scouts the third facility. base going down. This could be pretty big. I'll be interested to see. And there's a missile turret at the natural and spots the Observer, and it quickly gets sniped by the four Marines. And I am actually getting messaged right now. I am not set to busy because I've restarted StarCraft 2. <laughs> oh, it's funny. This guy's asking me if it is the White Raw in my tournament, but no, it is not. Uh, <laughs> it is not the White Raw, just someone using that name. As right, White Raw now goes under the alias <laughs> Duckload Raw instead of White Raw for his account. And also, they've also added a thing with character codes now in StarCraft 2. Two people can actually have the same name from what I understand, and you'll just have a different character code. Wow, that is a ton of charge lots right. on the field. If we look at the units there, 26 Zealots. Wow, that is just a lot. Right. We have uh, three immortals, but he's definitely behind, though, in worker count. And he only has yeah. one view out. Sidewinder putting down his third, his, uh, and he much. really does need to be doing that soon, as his main is almost completely mined out, and he'll be wanting to transfer those workers. And, of course, we totally missed that drop. Tisk tisk, you're supposed to watch for that. Anyways, we missed the drop. It took out the Robo Bay. Uh, absolutely no damage done to the medevac. You didn't point out the drop I to me. It. Oh, okay. I didn't well, say the robotics bay was oh, going man. down. He just got My the bad. Job. I'm not paying attention then, uh, obviously. <laughs> and we see okay. uh, Sidewinder making the smart choice to go <laughs> after this third base rather than directly going into uh, the main base or the expansion area. And right now, Hoog needs to lift this off as these charge lots are just doing so much damage and not a quick enough reaction time, completely losing that. And oh my god, he's bringing his bio ball out. This is bad. He really needs the support of a siege tank. He does not have enough units here to take on. And oh my god, his army is completely out of position. Oh, this is big. Those charge lights going in, charging in, airing up those tanks. And oh, beautiful arms coming down, dueling 
tons and tons of damage to the Terran army, and this game is going to be over very soon. Siege tanks really need the support of the Bile Ball. Very, very bad micro with this army, costing who a lot in this game. Two more siege tanks sieging up. As we can see, these siege tanks were not very useful in that engagement, as all they were able to do is deal with these. Oh, and another siege tank fall, falls due to splash damage from the other siege tanks. Hoog right now though, completely behind, I don't think he'll be able to come back in this game at all as our Protoss player is already starting to mass up a lot more charge slots and his third base is now up and running and Hoog has absolutely no economy, should be transferring all of his workers right now down to his expansion. And right. also forgetting about his dropship here which could actually be quite useful right now. He's very far behind in the game, he really needs something to put him back in this game. And right now the drop might be his only option. Uh, if The problem is it's really going to be hard to get a drop anywhere useful right now, especially with the positioning of this dropship, as really dropping in the back of this third base would, only, would be the only real useful place right now to deal enough damage. I do like the fact that we're seeing ghosts on the field, being able to use that EMP ability can do a lot against Protoss armies, but he has to be very careful with the small army as he does not want to lose any units right now, he's that far behind. And we see him taking the gold base because he knows he's that far behind in this game, and if he does not do a big move, he will definitely lose. So he's doing his big move, and oh my god, no, running his army straight in here, he needs to pick them up, no! Oh, and the medevacs getting feedback. Oh, huge blunder here by Hoog. Really should have put them in those medevacs, dropped them up on this high glyph, cliff, abused the lack of mobility of charge lots, and he would have been able to stay up here, and once that army started coming back around, he could have run away, or he could have just flown his medevacs out right away. Hoog throwing down the GG, and he will be losing the first match, and soon we'll be going on to game two. Then we have... Oh, man, I'm not casting very well right now at all. <laughs> you don't...